my picture book. Aww. Once, there was an Okusan. There was something the Okusan wanted to find, no matter what. So he ran to the ends of the earth. The Okusan was very fast. He could run anywhere. He ran everywhere. At the end of the earth, there was a giant hole in the ground. And Okusan fell into the hole. No one remembers the Okusan now. Poor Okusan. Poor Okusan. Well, that's depressing. <gasps> uh oh. Okusan. Oh, Okusan is the pudding god! Okusan is the god of Mount Pudding! Okusan! Hostage confirmed. Moving to secure. Okusan, let's get out of here. Okay? Okusan used wing attack. It's super effective. Ow, ow, Okusan, that hurts. Calm down and listen to me. Okusan is not Okusan. Okusan is the god of Mount Pudding. You're not being a particularly benevolent god either way. Yeah, Okusan. A god has to listen to the voices of the downtrodden common people. Really? Yes. Cool. In that case, Okusan will listen for three centimeters. Okusan, this pudding isn't real. You have to kiss a goodbye and come back to reality. Cool. Silence. So three centimeters is about ten seconds. Looks like it. Okusan, calm down. This crummy thing isn't the pudding you've been searching for all these years. Cool. Pudding is pudding. What does Lana know about pudding? I don't know anything about pudding. Uh, think about it, Okasan. Is the pudding you think something I could understand? Of course not. It's something beyond and above something completely outside my comprehension. But whenever you talk about pudding, it's like... It's the meaning of the universe, or final secret of the earth, or something of cold deity. No matter how hard you try to explain it, I just don't get it. I still don't know what the pudding you're looking for is. But I do understand that it's not something you can find just like that. Cool! Of course not! The pudding is an amazing treasure! Doesn't this strike you as odd, then? How could you have found that amazing treasure without doing anything? Cool! What have you been training for all these years? Haven't you been training so you can find the pudding which sleeps forgotten at the end of the earth? You couldn't possibly find a treasure like that that easily. It's a trap, Okasan. A fake. You have to remember, Okasan. Remember the pudding you seek. Before you know it, we're standing on a room just like the one we started. I like that. I like the little uh, stained glass picture. Was everything we saw in here before just an illusion created by the king? Probably, yeah. He was hoping to hold us back. Cool! Oh, Kusana's remembered! Cool! Truth pudding is the universe itself! But it cannot be found in the universe. It is infinite! I don't think I follow. Don't worry, I don't either. Cool, cool! Okusan must return to the Earth and seek the true pudding! The wall cracked? We must be breaking the shell. It's like a migrant said. Oh, I get it. When someone starts thinking, I want to go home, the egg cracks a little. <laughs> Sorry, my nose is a little clogged. Doesn't look like it'll crack anymore, though. We probably couldn't break it by hand. We'll need to keep going forward. Cool! Okusan is going home! Okusan, wait! Okusan gallops off into the darkness, snorting and cooing with excitement. Well, he can probably take care of himself just fine. Probably. My eyes are getting used to the darkness again, and I can make out another door opposite from where I came in. Who will we find in the next room? The, un the unclosed picture book. Once there was a chrysalis. 
Yes, the chrysalis was all alone. It didn't know how to grow up, so it stayed a chrysalis forever. One day, a butterfly came along. The butterfly said, let's be friends. I can show you how to become a beautiful butterfly like me. The lonely chrysalis was happy because it wasn't alone anymore. But its friend, the butterfly, disappeared soon after. The lonely chrysalis was alone again. It didn't know where to go anymore. It didn't know what it wanted to do anymore. The lonely chrysalis shrank and hardened. Nothing will ever come out of it now. Poor chrysalis. Poor chrysalis. Oh no. It's the Christmas Junkies! And here I was expecting some emotionally charged, heart warm wrenching scene. You shouldn't judge you shouldn't judge by appearances. Maybe these creatures have some sort of deep internal conflict as well. Well, we did find out that they have a tragic backstory. Mir, Kaku, we need to get out of here. If we stay here too long, we won't be able to go home anymore. This place is called a holiday star, but it's not Christmas, is it? If we don't get out of here, we'll never be able to celebrate Christmas again. Merry Christmas! Shut! Top Tattoo Six! I suppose that's an expression of surprise. They do appear to be moved. Merry Christmas! That would be bad! Really bad! Merry Christmas! Me and Kaka want to start preparing for next Christmas! Zoom! The two of them run off into the darkness. That was a lot easier than Okasan. But there aren't any cracks in the shell. There must still be someone here. I guess so. We just went through this plank corridor a little while ago anyway. I already know who we'll find through that door. Enormous enemy is approaching. Keep your dignity, Nageki. I'm already dead, so I think I'll be safe no matter what, but do be careful, Miss Perron. <laughs> Legacy! Coming through! Huh? There's no reply. It's just a kitchen. Miss Perona, watch out. What? What, what happened? Nageki slams into me from behind. I go rolling across the floor. Nageki! I thought you were such a gentleman. I am surprised you are. Complain to whoever attached that thing to the ceiling. A gigantic bear trap was lying on the floor where I stood moments ago. Did that fall from the ceiling? Oh, do forgive me. It appears to have fallen a little more slowly than I calculated for. Do not fear. I will use more exact measurements next time. What do you mean, do not fear, you political pig partridge proprietor? And you're supposed to lay bear traps on the ground anyway. Hanging it from the ceiling? Really? I swear, kids these days can't do anything right. I was planning to modify it such that it would seize the victim's head and then let them back up to the ceiling. It would help with desangualization, you see. I see you weren't putting it close after all. My neck hurts just thinking about it. Fluffy heretic chef! I mean, Dr. Iwamine! Your dark fantasy affections end now! You've noticed too, right? This place isn't normal! We've been shut in! If we stay here for too long, we'll. Enter a persistent vegetative state. What? You mean you already know? I read a report on a similar phenomenon where a number of people shared a dream. A few years ago now. I suspect we are under the effects of something not unlike mass hypnosis caused by the eclipse. If that's not the case, you shall not be here. Well, at least we don't have to explain it to you. Let's escape together, Doctor. No, thank you. Rejected at the speed of light. I 
Are you comfortable here then? Hmm, who knows? I haven't even been here if I have a day. I haven't quite decided yet. But didn't you say yourself that you're one of those sad people who only love research, Doctor? Your brains will rot and drip out of your ears if you stay in this turtle holiday kingdom with this happy-go-lucky king. I'm just what you're saying. If I have my fill of research, I cannot complain. The term vegetative is not entirely accurate. The brain relinquishes control over the body and sinks into a state of pure, unadulterated thought. Is this not so? Uh... You did say that our brains were disconnected from our bodies, so... I guess so? To cast away all functions but conscious thought. What a pure state of being. It fascinates me. But... Do you really want to stay in this dream forever, Doctor? Since when were you the dreamy type? Dreams are not such rigid things as you seem to think. The activity of the brain is no different while dreaming than while waking. But there isn't anything here to use for your favorite diabolical experiments. No, we cannot be so sure about that. The king of the stars seemed to have absorbed the knowledge and experiences of all who have washed ashore here and blended them into a being capable of conscious action after all. You've lost me. To put it in another way, the birds of the star hold within themselves the capability to replay any number of past events. And the stars particularly are flowing with material for study. I have no worries there. This isn't the sort of thing that happens every day after all. Since I have the chance to experience it, I want to stay and take advantage of it. Are you really sure about that, sir? No matter how what you study, no matter what you discover, you'll never be able to announce it to the world. I seek knowledge and knowledge alone. I am not doing this for someone else's sake or for some earthly goal. Given the chance to engage in unadulterated thought without outside disturbance, I'm happy to accept it. Go on ahead. We have nothing more to talk about. The shell cracked. Well, it did crack, but it looks a little subpar. Those cracks must be from Miro and Kaku. Probably. We don't have much time, so we'll go rescue the others. Please reconsider while we're gone, Doctor. Well, we shall see. <laughs> this is no time for ho ho ho, Flipetic. I do hope he decides to help us. The infirmary would be awfully lonely without the murderous Flipetic around. Miss Verona. Yeah? We've got a company. Greetings, travelers. Jeez, we've already decided to go home! No one likes the host who tries to lock you in their house and make you stay forever. How many of these vague see-through citizens are there anyway? You all should try to talk to the king too. Only a tyrant will try to stop visitors from leaving, right? Have you all been here with that king forever? No, we haven't. We are the same as you. So you came from outside? You must have been the same. We were very afraid, and we came here. Uh, afraid? Kiki and I had a nice time coming here on a comfortable train with a friendly conductor. I don't remember being afraid of anything. If you came from outside, you have homes to return to, right? Why are you staying here? Because we don't have to worry about anything. Because there's nothing scary here. The king said the king is all, and all are the king. Soon, you guests from away will be the king too. All are the king. So there's nothing scary here. Everyone is together. Let's be together. The king is waiting on his royal throne. But 
My king. The king glances nervously at the Geki. The king does not want to be friends with that morning dove. You don't have to come. That's not very nice of you. The king commanded, you shall stay away. The king faded in the darkness, leaving their selfish command behind. Wow, Nageki! By the look on your face, I bet the king is changing his royal underwear right now about you. He's a bit of a crybaby. I don't think scaring him is very hard. I do wonder about it, though. Why was he so afraid of Nageki? The migrant said something about that, too. Maybe you're the king's natural enemy. Well, let's hope so. And those vague citizens turned the king and disappeared. If what they said is true... Perhaps everyone who stays here ends up turning into the king. That's a bit much. What is this, a horror movie? At least it sounds like he's waiting for us. We've got to find the others and then teach them a thing or two about the international travel laws. Not much variety in the decor here. I must say, I'm getting a little sick of it. One of the things are going on the roof. I can probably trust Mr. Rone. Leon, rather, to keep my body from spontaneously combusting or anything like that. That artistic scientist fellow's probably cleared the clouds away. But that king of this place blocked the movement. A search and rescue mission in a zone of total surrealism, eh? This is new even to me. The decorated picture book. Once there was a beautiful piano. The piano was decorated with gemstones and all the colors of the rainbow. Oh, how it sparkled and glittered. Everyone told it it was beautiful. What a beautiful piano. No one had ever seen such a wonderful piano before. The piano's owner was very pleased and decorated the piano even more. Everyone in all the land praised the piano's beauty. No one from anywhere wanted to hear its voice. But the gemstones were heavy so heavy that one day they crushed the piano flat poor piano poor piano what is that trash is there no limit to this vulgarity the composition is poor the story juvenile and that artsy mess i open the door to find a fantail angrily beating the book on the floor salutation sucker yeah. I'm glad to see you're still yourself. What? Is there no getting rid of you? What now? The tea party's already over. Is it? That's too bad. I was really looking forward to drinking some of your tea, too. I wouldn't have given you anything even if you had showed up on time. Don't get full of yourself, mongrel. I'll be expecting an invitation card next time, too. Sakya sticks his beak in the air and coos irritatedly. By the way, what were you reading just now? I picked up the book which Sakia had thrown on the floor. Eh, I haven't the slightest. Do you remember where you found it? I don't, don't treat me like a child. The king gave it to me. I do not mean to insult a gift of royalty, but that thing is amazing. It is like the scribbles of a deranged child. Picture book, eh? So this is a little flirtation from the king, or rather, an invitation to stay here. And I suppose it's meant to paint reality in a poor light to flatter the world of dreams. Alas, its message appears to have been lost on Sakia. Something is wrong with someone who dresses a musical instrument up like a Christmas tree. Instruments come with their own beauty already built in. Gaudiness is hardly the deciding factor in an instrument value. Indeed, an instrument covered in sparkling jew jaws are impressed uncultured fools in this epitome of crassness. Decorating an instrument to the determinant of this tone is absurd, ludicrous. If the author of this drivel was here now, I would sit him down and lecture him for three days without break. He continues on angrily, expounding the qualities of the musical timbre. I wonder if he realizes just how much he cares about music. As his brother, I can only hope to see the magnificent blooming of that enthusiasm one day in the real world. 
Very true. Visual flair is hardly what an instrument is there for. The piano is here should have used his voice to let anyone know that before he got crushed. I wasn't created to be decorated. Let me sing. Something like that? What are you smoking like that? What a distasteful cretin you are. I love how thick-headed you are, Sophia. It'll save me a lot of trouble. But what is this? Do you mock me? No, quite the opposite. That was a praise. I doubt it. Your ridiculous facial expression is proof of your deceit. Forgive me, I was born with it. What am I to do? Now then, I can't spend too much time here. I doubt whoever I run into next will be as easy as you, after all. I knew you didn't just want to hear my chants. Tell me what is happening. You're always good at keeping things moving. Thanks, Sophia. But you did not jest. It's hard to believe, but unfortunately, it's true. You and I are put together with a whole pile of electrical wires right now. You can't! Without my permission! You weren't exactly being responsive. And it's an emergency anyway. Easier to ask forgiveness and approval, right? Ugh. Now then, Sakuri, will you spend eternity having tea here with that cheerful, artistically challenged king? Inconceivable! I will not stand for it! Just who do you think I am? I'm sure we're gonna suck you and LaBelle. It is completely out of the question. I demand to see the man responsible for this idiocy at once. I shall have recom... I shall have recompense for his gross discourtesy towards me. So he runs off in the darkness, an aura of unusual proactivity about him. No one gets the better, my little brother. Now then, who's next? The black and white picture book. Once upon a time, there lived a white dove and a black dove. The white dove loved the sunflower. The black dove loved the sunflower too. What a beautiful sunflower it was. It was warm and bright as the sun itself. The sunflower would go out and play with the doves all day long. But one day, the sunflower made friends with the star. And after that, the sunflower always went out at night. Without the sunflower, as bright as the sun could light them, the days became dark. The white dove knew how nice the night star was, became sad and more sad, and cried. The black dove thought the night star should turn into a shooting star and could disappear somewhere far away. Things would be better then. But in the end, both doves froze in the darkness and died. Poor doves. Poor doves. This one's just as bad as the last one. Not my style at all. What did you think of it? Kawara Ryuta. The king said you have done nothing wrong. You were the one who found the treasure first. That doesn't mean anything. How I feel doesn't matter. Looks like he's more interested in talking to the king than to me. I guess I'm still just not charming enough. The king said that morning dove is a bad, bad bird. That morning dove wants to steal something precious from the king. And from you. You must know already that that morning dove is an evil, evil demon. Nageki is a ghost, but he's not evil. I guess he can be scary if you make a mess of the library books, but... The king said, but you are very afraid of him, are you not? Because you can tell that your greatness greatest treasure will be taken far, far away. If you join the king, you will not be afraid of anything anymore. The evil demon will be gone then. The king is waiting for you. After a lot of smarmy babbling, the king disappears. Salutations, oh troubled young pigeon. Mind if I join you for a bit? Oh, Yuya! So you, so you ended up here too. I thought it was just us. Well, I wasn't exactly invited. You know how it is. I'm here to rescue you all. 
blah, 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 blah. Please decide to bust out of here and come home with me as soon as possible. I see. So we're all in the same dream after all. So it's not just something I'm imagining all by myself. By all indications, yes. The king there is the host and creator of the charade. And you're all guests. And I'm crashing the party. Everyone dreaming the same dream beneath the star night sky. Of every moment. So, are you still caught up in this dream? I don't... I don't know. I don't know what I want anymore. It's very painful. And when I wake up, it might just end up even more painful. From what little I saw the king's solicitations, I can guess pretty easily what he means. And I have been a specialist in that area. You know by now that it's that causing you pain, right? I... I haven't done... Talk to me, Yuna. I'm here for you, and I can help you. What's bothering you? What are you afraid of? Once you put it to words, you'll know exactly what you need to do. And that's what I think, anyway. That's why I talk so much all the time. Seems reasonable, doesn't it? At this rate, you'll rot from the inside. Quite literally, at that. Be brave, Yuda. I'm... I'm afraid of Lana not being with me, even in this dream. I always worry too much, and at first I thought this dream was just me being scared that someday she'll leave me behind. But I guess that's not it. The Lana I saw here is the real Lana. His eyes flicker about nervously. What he says is true, even though this is a dream. Lana is acting of her own accord. Lana has been with me ever since we were children. We've been together so long, I just... Somewhere along the line, I started thinking it would stay like that forever. But it won't. It never would. It was all just my imagination. All of it. His eyes glistened with tears. Ah, oh, how brightly his innocence shines to what is worthy of changes as myself. He probably hasn't even realized that what he's fallen into love. It took... I took it all for granted. I thought it would last forever. But that's not possible. I know Lana better than anyone. I know what she loves and what she hates. What she's good at and what she isn't. I know everything about her. But I don't anymore. Nageki. Nageki knows Lana that I don't. And not just in this dream. She spends more time in the library every day. If someday I stop being special to her. For that matter. Maybe I just thought I was special to her. All this time to her. I've been nothing but... Well, well. What a pickle. If I've been reading the signs right, Nageki and Lana are quite at the point where Yuta should be worrying. But his fears aren't going to get more and more likely by the day. I need to pick my words carefully. I think hope this young man's heart to be back in the real world without breaking it. Persuasion to maximum. Uh. Why not? What exactly do you mean by special? Something irreplaceable? I don't really understand myself. But at the very least, to me, L Lana's Lana. And no one can ever take her place. So that's it? What were you ever afraid of then? No one can ever be replaced for you, though. You will never stop being special to Lana in that respect. It's as simple as that. You don't think I'm trying to fool you or anything, do you? That's... true, I guess. But that's not it. I'm scared that I just won't be with her as much any... Of course not. You can't stay children forever. Feel like writing me off as a heartless bastard yet? But ignoring me won't change anything. Time will pass. Places will change. But first flowers in spring, shooting star, the rainbow right after a storm, 
all beautiful, and none can be captured and held forever. No matter how fair the flower will rot and fall to pieces if you never let it go. But memories will never hurt you. The flower withers, the star falls, and the rainbow fades away. But you will always remember their beauty. Are you telling me to go on alone with nothing but my memories? That's a little pessimistic. What I'm saying is, don't let your fears for tomorrow cloud the memories you're making today. That's actually a really good thing to say. Because if you always freak out about what's going to happen in the future, right now, you're going to be sent in a constant panic over and over and over. I've been there. It's not good. That's too abstract for me. I don't think I understand. How long is it going to keep floundering about? Let's be a little more clear. Maybe you'll be an unrequited lover. Or maybe you'll live and have family with Mana. Or maybe you'll go your own separate ways. But whatever happens, all the time you spend with her, all the joys you've had, will still be yours. That just makes it even worse. How can I live without the sun, now that I'm so used to its warm and light? I'm scared, Yuya. I don't want to see everything I know collapse around me. This is pretty bad. I've been taking it for a quiet metrosexual. But maybe he's really into the whole total monopolization thing. And as far as I can tell, Miss Lana herself hasn't got the slightest idea all that is going on. Oh, what a sinfully negligent lady. Everything changes, Ryuta. Time is like that. Inconvenient and rude to everyone. Even if you stand still, everything else will leave you behind. No matter how hard you try to prevent change, it will still come. The world and your friends will still change. If what you really want is undisturbed peace for the rest of your days, you'll have to cut all your ties, leave everyone behind, and become a hermit in the mountains. No, I don't want that. I didn't think you did. Are you planning to ask someone else to stay with you then? That, that wouldn't be right. I couldn't ask for something like that. It would be too selfish. So you think it would be selfish? Aren't you wishing someone would do that for you? Just a little bit deep inside? I don't know. Maybe I am. Well, maybe you are. Right. Aren't you afraid, Yuya? Everything around us is changing, and so are we. We don't know what's ahead. Doesn't that scare you? There are things that scare me, even, yes. Even a hero of justice has its weaknesses. What's waiting for me at the other end of this night? The best day of my life? Or the very worst? No one knows. And that's why. That's why all we who cannot see tomorrow can do is put on our bravest smiles and march boldly into the new day. Isn't that called bluffing? <laughs> I suppose it is. All this time I've just been trying to look cool so no one will real realize what's going on inside. What's wrong with putting on a little show? I have a question for you. There are only two choices. We're running a little low on time, you see. Gawara Ryuta, what do you want to do? If you'd accept the king's invitation and stay here, I think it would be removed. You would spend eternity celebrating the endless holiday with Lana, and tomorrow would never come. Nothing would change, and nothing would hurt you ever again. Or, you could refuse the king's invitation and return to the real world. Your relationship with Lana will change, sooner or later, for better or worse. A new day will come. Now choose. I won't try to force you either way. You alone can decide what your salvation will be. And in any case, it won't do us any good unless he decides to break free himself. I... 